Hello, guys! Welcome back to Book Club. It's the first one of 2021. This is so exciting. I have been so excited to come back um, and talk with you guys. I think, you know, obviously 2020 was a crazy year for many reasons. Um, but one thing that really helped me get through was having this book club and having something to look forward to every week and being able to talk to you guys and, um, you know, just discover so many new books per your recommendations. So like this has definitely meant so much to me and I'm so excited to continue it. Um, yeah, so we're bringing it into the new year. I also wanted to just mention last year we were doing every week. Um, I do feel like it's a bit ambitious to do a book a week. If you're like me, like I will stay inside and read all day, but obviously life is kind of starting again. Um, I hope everyone's being safe, but I just wanted to give everyone enough time to read the book. So that's why we're doing it monthly now. Um, and it could not start off more perfect. Um, when I heard that Joan Didion, I'm obviously like a Joan Didion super fan. Sorry connection um so we did play it as it lays last year with emily which was like an amazing introduction to joan for me and then obviously i got obsessed and purchased everything joan has ever written and um watched her documentary which if you haven't watched her documentary i recommend it it is so cool it really just like dives deep into her life and um it inspired me so much, so I definitely recommend that if you guys haven't watched it. Um, but yeah, this week is so special because I was given an advanced copy of her new collection of essays called Let Me Tell You What I Mean. And um, it actually came out yesterday, so now everyone can buy it. Highly, highly recommend it. It is so cool, especially if you love Joan like I do, which I think everyone should. Um, but yeah, so the, I was given an advanced copy, which to me is like the most exciting and cool thing that's probably ever happened. I read it immediately and just, I would expect nothing less from her. But um, yeah, so we are lucky enough to be able to talk about that today. And I wanted to start out with a brilliant Joan Didion quote that I love so much. And um, I thought it would be a really nice sort of beginning for this book club. We tell ourselves stories in order to live. We look for the sermon in the suicide, for the social or moral lesson in the murder of five. We interpret what we see, select the most workable of the multiple choices. And she's a genius, like I don't even know what to say. Um, so basically the next like 30 minutes to an hour, I could probably talk about her for multiple hours, but I think I'll limit it for everyone's sake. Um, but yeah, I'll just be talking about how much I love Joan Didion and her new book and what she touches on and all that fun stuff. Also, something to note, um, we are giving away a copy of her new book. So I'm gonna post this to IGTV. If you want to maybe win a copy of her book, which you do, uh, you should comment on that because I will then get that to you. And then we can talk about it because I just, I also noticed today, it's like really, if you haven't read The Year of Magical Thinking also, so good. Um, but yeah, I just love Joan. So anyways, here's me telling you how much I love Joan for the next hour. Um, so we're kind of just going to deep dive into her body of work and talk about her life. And let's get into it. It's also just me today. Can't get enough of me, I know. Um, yeah, I know I normally bring guests on, but for this one, because the book hadn't come out yet, I just thought, you know, it could be a good way to interact with you guys. So I'd love to take questions or comments or anything at the end. Um, and that way I can just sort of talk about Joan. Um, all right, so a little bit about her. She was born in Sacramento, California. She is from California, just like me, um, in 1934. So she spent her teenage years, I actually found this so interesting. She spent her teenage years typing out Ernest Hemingway stories to learn how sentences work. And I think her writing still kind of reflects this a little bit. Um, she attended UC Berkeley where she got a degree in English. Uh, she won an essay contest by Vogue magazine. Actually the prize was that you could go work as a research assistant at Vogue. And she ended up working at Vogue for like more than a decade. So 
that's kind of how Joan started. Um, she spent a lot of time at her house in Malibu. Everyone knows I love Malibu, born and raised. Um, and so yeah, she spent a lot of time at her house in Malibu in the 60s and 70s. And she gained traction as a writer, but first she was more known for her journalism work. So, um, a little bit about her book. She became known for capturing like counterculture of creatives in the 60s, mostly in Hollywood. So she lived, she lived on Franklin. It explains this all in the documentary, but basically she lived on Franklin with her, her husband and her daughter um, and was really kind of emerged into this rock culture and Hollywood culture. So a lot of her writing talks about that. Um, she then later became known, sadly, but brilliantly for capturing the essence of grief in a way that I don't think any other writer of, um, of that time had done. So she, yeah, in her, she writes two books about grief, Your Magical Thinking and Blue Nights, which we'll talk about more later. Um, heartbreaking, but so beautiful. Um, so let's, I thought we could like go into all of her different books. Um, so the, one of the first, Slouching Towards Bethlehem, I have this cute little copy of it. Someone actually got it for me, someone who I think might be watching this live, got it for me, um, because they said it kind of looked like me. And I was honored, so <laughs> I'll take that any day. Um, it was her first volume of essays that she had done. Um, the New York Times called it a rich display of some of the best prose written today in this country. So obviously she came in very strong. Um, the next one, which we did for a book club, was Played As It Lays. So I hope a lot of you watching now have already seen that. Um, it was her second novel. It's about a fading starlet whose dissatisfa dissatisfaction with Hollywood um, kind of leads her farther and farther away from reality. And she said a brilliant quote about this actually in her new book. Um, so she talks about the process of writing played as it lays. And I just loved this so much because when I read the book, I remember like I couldn't put into words how I felt about it, um, but she did it for us. So she said she wanted to write a novel so elliptical and fast that it would be over before you noticed it. A novel so fast that it would scarcely exist on the page at all which I think played as it lays really does that because as soon as you realize what's happening, it's over and you're like, what? But so much happens in this story. So I kind of love the fast pace of played as it lays and it really reflects the time in LA that she was living in. Um, and it definitely reflects the time she was having in her life, which again, talks about in the documentary, but it is interesting when you sort of learn the trajectory of her life and the course of her life and how her work was always, always, you know, reflecting how she was feeling. So um, then the White Album, which I just read, and I also have here, my, my book library is like only Jim Didion. Um, the White Album. This one's so cool, especially growing up in LA um, and just loving the 60s and 70s. It kind of just talks about culture in the late 60s, early 70s. Um, it was her second book of essays published in 1979 and it kind of talks about like Nancy Reagan, the Manson trials, um, the women's movement, a lot of those sort of topics. The water in LA, how the water runs through LA, the reservoir system, which I never thought I cared about until Joan started talking about it and then I was like, yeah, if Joan's interested in this, I should be too. She also talks about traffic in LA in a way that so very, very, I think it still like very much holds up. So um, I love this book. I highly recommend it also. Um, and then we go into the year of magical thinking and blue nights. I also have both of those. Um, so the year of magical thinking is about her, the grief of her husband. Um, so Joan's husband, John Gregory Dunn died in 2003. Hi, Charlotte. <laughs> Congratulations on your music video. <laughs> I love you. Um, back to this. Joan's husband died in 2003, um, which ended up being a very like, tragic, tragic year for her. Um, but she wrote about the grief she felt at Dunn's death in this book. So it's been called 
a masterpiece of two genres, memoir and investigative journalism. I think Joan has a really incredible way of writing about very personal topics with a sort of objective journalism standpoint. Um, it's just so interesting to read because there's so much emotion in this book, yet it's put very plainly and simply, um, and it won the National Book Award. So, this one is like, yeah. Um, definitely heavy though. <laughs> so set, a, set aside time to read this one because um, you will grieve alongside of her. But I pulled a quote, two quotes from it that I really loved. We are not idealized wild things. We are imperfect mortal beings, aware of that mortality even as we push it away. Failed by our very complication, so wired that when we mourn our losses, we also mourn, for better or for worse, ourselves, as we were, as we are no longer, as we will one day not be at all. So, I don't even have to say anything. <laughs> I'm gonna cry just literally just reading it now. Um, she also writes, I know why we try to keep the dead alive. We try to keep them alive in order to keep them with us. I also know that if we are to live ourselves, there comes a point at which we must relinquish the dead. Let them go, keep them dead. Just the truth, I think, that Joan has in her words and the way that she puts it so plain and simply, but she can do it with topics that I think a lot of us struggle to actually be able to put into words. So, um, yeah, reading The Year of Magical Thinking gave me a completely different point of view on grief and the process of grief and loss. And I think why we all have such a hard time letting that go. Um, I know she talks a lot about being afraid that the days were gonna pass because as days passed and time passed, she'd be farther and farther away from the memory of her husband um and also sort of doing more research on Joan and her husband John Gregory Russell I think their relationship was so beautiful in so many ways they created such a creative safe space for each other and they were both writers and um she talks about the fact that they would run everything by each other like nothing got sent out before they read it the other person's work and um there was one point where they were maybe going through a divorce um, and she was writing about it because she would that was what she was writing, what she knew. And um, someone had asked her, well, you know, is John reading this? And she's like, of course, he's the first person to read everything. And I just thought in lieu of the sadness that that was kind of a beautiful sort of sentiment. Um, yeah. And then unfortunately also that year, Joan lost her daughter Quintana Roo um, to acute pancreatitis. So Quintana was actually in the ICU when John died. So it, I can't imagine if you can, you know, the overwhelming feelings of grief that Joan had that year, but fortunately she found a way to put it on paper. Um, so to that, she wrote Blue Nights this one she talks about being a lot harder for her to write. I think she actually ended up writing it for a friend. She was more just like, here you go. Um, nobody should have to experience losing a child. Um, but to be able to write about it and to put it into words, I think is an incredible thing. Um, and Joan did that. So she wrote a memoir about her called Blue Nights, about her daughter Quintana, published in 2011. Um, and she, I pulled a quote from this one. She said, I know what the fear is. The fear is not for what is lost. What is lost is already in the wall. What is lost is already behind the locked doors. The fear is for what is still to be lost. Again, they don't need explanations, you guys understand. Um, so now I wanna get into Let Me Tell You What I Mean, because that is her newest book. Um, it's organized chronologically from 1968 to 2000. So it goes through a lot of Joan's life, a lot of essays and pieces that she had written all put into one place. Um, so it's 12 different essays. Also, Hilton Alts wrote the foreword, which I think is so cool. He's a queer black writer for The New Yorker. So he wrote an incredible foreword um, that I think everyone should read before getting into the book. Um, so I want to talk about just a few of the essays. There's a lot in here, obviously, um, but I just wanted to kind of touch on a few that really stood out to me. Um, 
So the first one, Alicia and the Underground Press. So she kind of writes of tabloid sized papers um, and praises that they speak directly to their readers, the sort of idea of tabloids. And I actually think this is such an interesting standpoint that she had because we deal with this a lot now, you know, how tabloids sometimes appeal over news. I think people kind of crave that sort of like fictionalized or intensified, um, even if it's not fictionalized, sort of nastiness of sharing people's private lives. Um, but society is guilty of it. And I think this was a time when tabloids were kind of really coming into play and she was seeing what was happening to journalism and the news in light of all of these tabloids sort of starting to circulate. Um, and, you know, now we have obviously different versions of it. Tabloids are celebration that we're being fed on social media through different platforms from different people. Uh, I still think these issues obviously have evolved, but are still very prevalent today. Um, and knowing where to get your news from can be very difficult. So uh, Joan talking about that, she was struggling with that even back then. Um, I think it's actually really cool. Um, everywoman.com was one of my favorite essays actually because she writes about Martha Stewart, who if you guys don't know who Martha Stewart, I mean, everyone knows who Martha Stewart is. Obviously you guys know who Martha Stewart is, but if you don't, you should. Um, but yeah, she writes about Martha Stewart and kind of the anomaly of Martha Stewart. This one is from 2000, so this is the last one. Um, it examines the cultural meaning of Martha Stewart's success because it was sort of the way that she branded herself as every woman and not superwoman, not this like super celebrity, untouchable person. Um, and it actually, she talks a lot about female success, how especially in the 90s and early 2000s, it was very much about being relatable um, to the masses, not being too sexy or too this or too that, um, which is actually a very toxic way of thinking when you really think about it. A woman shouldn't have to be afraid of being too this or too that. Um, so I think that this is an issue that Gen Z and our generation and this generation is actually working hard to get away from and sort of reverse. Um, so she called this out 20 years before we even started acting on it, but obviously Queen Joan, she knows everything. So she knew, she saw it. Um, and then she has an incredible one called Why I Write. And I pulled a quote, a couple of quotes from it, but one quote I really liked was, I wanted not a window on the world, but the world itself genius again um she talks about like her preference um of novels over short stories and she says i write entirely to find out what i'm thinking what i'm looking at what i see and what it means what i want and what i fear she talks about kind of she's like i don't even know what i'm thinking until i write it down and sometimes i do feel like that is true or even if it's not writing it down, even if it's just hearing yourself say it, sometimes it just validate, it like will validate those feelings and just sort of help you make sense of all of them. Um, so she talks about how she found that through writing. Obviously people find it through many different ways, but I really liked that quote. Um, also, I know I didn't even say anything. I'm wearing my young author's shirt in light of book club, so. Um, and then another great quote that she has, I think this is actually part of an interview that she did, um, but she says, I myself have always found that if I examine something, it's less scary. I grew up in the West and we always had this theory that if you saw, if you kept the snake in your eye line, the snake wasn't going to bite you. And that's kind of the way I feel about confronting pain. I want to know where it is. I just love that. I think identifying what's causing that pain Joan never shied away from her feelings. She looked at them straight on and she wrote about them and she turned them into something that you can hold and that she could give, you know, to the world and help the world. And I think that's what I admire so much about her is her ability to take this pain or not even pain, take the things that she has experienced and share them with the world in a way that is so unique to her. Um, and there is another essay that I just really loved, especially 
you know, I'm 19, so I didn't apply to college, but I know this is something that people my age do. Um, and I think for anyone facing rejection, she has an essay in this new book called On Being Unchosen by the College of One's Choice. Um, I think there's some, we find comfort in other people's rejection. So I think a part of it is finding comfort in Joan Didion's rejection. Um, and I think it should just be required reading for everyone applying to schools or anyone facing any kind of rejection really, um, that it's all part of the process and believing in that and believing in yourself. She didn't let that stop her and look how incredible she is. So um, yeah, I loved her take on sort of growing up and, and wanting this one thing and your parents wanting this one thing for you. Um, and when that doesn't happen, it can feel like the rug is sort of pulled out from beneath you, but that you can still keep walking and still get there and um, probably even to a better place. So I really love that one. Um, now I would love to kind of like, if you guys have any questions or anything, I would love to just talk because I don't have a guest coming on this time. I could talk forever about Joan Didion, um, obviously. But yeah, if you guys have any questions or anything you want to add, I will be reading comments if you guys want to chime in. <laughs> Would I ever go to college? Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. Questions about Joan? It's hard to read all of them on the live, I apologize. Um, ooh. More with you than the others. That's a good question. Did one book resonate more with me than the others? Um, I think... I think the year of magical thinking was definitely the most, it, it definitely like hit me the deepest. Um, and I took a lot of time to di digest that one. So I think for me, that one is, um, I just hold that one really near and dear to my heart. Um, which one of her pieces is your favorite? I couldn't choose a favorite Joan Didion. Can I say everything? Can I say her? Can I say she's my favorite? I'm gonna say that. <laughs> Mm. What made me first pick up a Joan Didion book? Um, actually, book club. So thank you guys. I had never read Joan Didion. I knew her, obviously, and I knew how amazing she was, but I'd never read a Joan Didion book until we did Play It As It Lays with Emily. So thank you, Emily, for doing that with me. Um, thank you guys for encouraging me to do that one. And yeah, since then I've read her entire body of work. <laughs> How do I choose books? Um, you guys, I take requests. I, anything, honestly, it's so hard. There's so many books out there and I wish I could read every book ever written in my lifetime, but I just don't think there's enough time for it. So I think it's kind of just what I'm feeling in that moment. I also really jump between genres and authors and, you know, I'll do short stories. I'll do, I think it's like, when people limit themselves, I only like nonfiction, or I only like memoirs, or I only like, you know, romantic novels. It's like, you can find that stuff in other bodies of work too. So I think it's like finding, just not being afraid to explore. What's one question I would ask Joan if I could? Ooh. <laughs> um, well, first I would say thank you for giving me an advanced copy of your book because Never in my life could I imagine um, getting an advanced copy of a Joan Didion book. That is so cool. Um, I think I would ask her what inspired her to write when she felt like she couldn't, in times that she was struggling, how she kind of, what gave her the strength to keep writing. Mm, oh, someone said, what's the best Joan Didion book to read first? Ah, I don't know. I mean, I read Play It As It Lays first. I think, I think I would do The Year of Magical Thinking. I think that one's just, yeah. I think that's what I would say to do first. Only if you're ready for a very intense read. Um, but that one definitely changed my whole point of view. Um... 
What's my favorite genre? Guys, I can't choose a genre. <sighs> my favorite genre of books. Um, I, I could not choose. I couldn't choose. If I told you like my top five favorite books, they, they are all over the place. There's like no common factor at all. Um, I think it's just ones that make me feel something. I also love when you read a book and you have to take a couple days to kind of grieve it. Maybe that sounds really dorky, but when I finish a really good book, like I grieve the fact that I've read it. Like I wish I could go back and have that time and like keep reading it for the first time. If I could only read one of Joan's books for the rest of your life, what would it be? Guys. Um, I can't. I mean, her new book, I will say, it covers so many different topics. So I do think it's interesting to have this sort of like record of how she's feeling through, over the course of like 40 years of her life. I think that's so cool. So maybe it's this new one. <laughs> how did I discover Joan's books? Book club. What's the name of the book? Okay, let me tell you what I mean. We all want to know what Joan means all the time. Um, what am I reading right now? Well, I just finished The White Album and Blue Nights. I wanted to read all of Joan's works before I did this, so um, that's what I've been reading. I have a favorite essay from Joan's work. Um, I really like why I write in this new book of essays. I think it explains a lot about Joan and the way that her mind works. Um, yeah. Someone said they did the pre-order, yay! It should come soon then, it just came out yesterday, so. I did read the one about self-respect. I thought it was so cool. She has a great quote about self-respect. Um, that I don't have with me, but if just look up Joan Didion quotes if you want enlightenment. <laughs> what was the book that really got me into reading? Ooh, this is a good one because I have a, an actual answer for this. Um, I always loved reading, but once I sort of got out of high school, I kind of stopped reading because I associated it with homework, um, as I think a lot of us do. And the first book that someone told me to read out of high school was The Stranger by Albert Camus. And I read that and then I read every other book. <laughs> so yeah, I would say that book for sure. Okay, we're asking about Harry Potter, which I have to answer. Favorite Harry Potter book? I haven't read all the books yet. Um, I've only read a few, but favorite movie? Prisoner of Azkaban, I think. I don't know. I'm gonna get whatever. Okay. Yeah, I'm sticking with it. I'm sticking with it. Um, and if you guys also have any sort of requests or anything for what you want to see for book club, like this is a community. I know it's just me talking for an hour right now. Um, but if you have anything, anything that you guys want to see or do, I'm so here for it. And this actually makes me so excited. So I would love to get your input and talk to you guys more about books that you love. Um, like it's, it's a club, it's a community. Um, so I really want you guys to feel included. Who is your favorite literary character of all time? Are you guys kidding me with these questions? Um, oh gosh. I, I actually couldn't choose. I, I could not choose. Um, someone said Norwegian Wood. That's a great book. I actually would love to do a Murakami book for book clubs. So if you guys have a favorite that you think I should do. Um, I've read a lot of his books. Not all of them because he has so many books. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you guys have any Murakami that is your favorite that you want me to do, 100% I'm in. Um, yeah, I love 
I just, I feel so grateful to be able to be doing Joan for this first one because I just had a month to like really deep dive into her life and I was so inspired by her. Um, if you haven't watched her documentary, like I said, I cannot recommend it enough. I think it, it just goes through her whole life and if you don't walk away inspired, I don't know what's wrong with you because I walked away just being like, I want to write about everything. I want to experience everything. Joan was never afraid to just get in there and she's so honest, which I find we do not get enough of these days. So she's so honest um, and her answers are so well thought out. Um, <laughs> hi Milo. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, so you should definitely watch her documentary if you want to learn more about Joan. Um, in the meantime, there are plenty of Joan books for you to read. Um, and I'm so excited to be back next month with another one that I will announce soon. Um, With my friends, I was bragging to everyone that I had an advanced copy of Joan Didion's new book. I was so annoying. I was carrying it around everywhere. Um, I read it in a day, but I was still keeping it with me because it's really tiny and cute. And yeah. Um, so thank you guys so, 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 so much for watching. Again, it's a book club. It's a community. I want to hear all of your thoughts and everything. So don't hesitate to give me those. Um, thank you so much. Have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe, please. Um, and I will check back in.